The presidency has accused the People's Democratic Party and former Vice President Atiku Abubakar of making wild and libelous allegations against President Bola Tinobu. Special Advisor to the President on Information and Strategy, Bayo Nanuga, accused the PDP and Mr. Atiku of raising false alarm and allegedly compromising the judiciary. The presidency stated that the PDP and Mr. Atiku Abubakar are overtly desperate to hang their woes in the court on President Tinobu and the judiciary, an important arm of government in Nigeria. According to Mr. Onanuga, President Tinobu is not planning to impose a one-party state, as Mr. Atiku has alleged, and his party and spokesman have now parroted. He said President Tinobu's record as a Democrat par excellence and a strong advocate of the rule of law has been globally acknowledged. Special Advisor to the President on Information and Strategy, Bayo Nanuga, joins me now on the program. Uh, with the recent judgment in Plato, Kano, and Zamfara nullifying the victory of uh, these governors, uh, are you surprised really that the PDP is crying foul? Well, uh, to our own mind, we think the PDP is just trying to, to blame, finding a scapegoat to blame for his own problems. Uh, the party deserves what it got in Sanfara State, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Plato State, and uh, some other places where it has suffered some setbacks. Uh, I'm, I, it's surprising that the party is not ready to examine itself, to find what he did wrong, to deserve all those set, legal setbacks. And just looking for a way to pass on the blame to our party and our president, and and also of course of, of course the judiciary. Uh, let the PDP search his soul. Let the, the uh, president, uh, former president VP Abubakar Tuku search his soul. You find that the blame does not belong to the president, does not belong to the judiciary. The party has itself to blame the PDP. Bobby Sonanuga, if you look at it as we wait for the Supreme Court to decide on these cases, the political map is already looking worrisome for uh, some political analysts who feel that Nigerians actually stand the risk of a one-party state. Should that worry you? Well, I don't see that kind of danger in the horizon. Um, if you also follow what has happened, our party lost. Adamawa State, Atiku's own state, uh, our candidate there went to court. The tribunal said our case was non meritorious and gave it to Atiku's party. Uh, we dragged the Bashi state governor to court. We lost it. Uh, so there was no problem. The problem is that anytime the PDP loses a case, they always say the judiciary is not doing well or the judiciary has been compromised. Uh, and there's no proof for all this. The same party, just some few days ago, I think on November 9 or so, one of their party members won the Abia Central Senatorial uh, 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 election by affirmation by the uh, appeal court. The party celebrated it. At that point in time, the PDP will say, oh, judiciary is the best. Oh, judiciary has upheld the rule of law. But any time, a case is 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 a uh, wound against them. Oh, the party will not say the judiciary is very bad. Uh, President Tinubu has compromised the judiciary. It's all red herring. It's, it's all these are misleading, uh, misleading statements that the party keeps making, and they are not true at all. Right, but Mr. Nanuga, if you think back to when the APC was actually in opposition, the party was commended by Nigerians for being a strong opposition. I mean, critiquing the policies and actions of government. Uh, what kind of opposition do you really expect from the PDP at this time, considering that uh, you think they are already crying foul over these cases? No, first of all, we expect the PDP and the other members of the opposition, the Labour Party, the NMPP, to be a responsible opposition. We don't want an opposition that will keep digging up uh, misleading information, uh, rumors, innuendos. They should do their research for coming to the public arena. They should just, just wake up and start blaming everybody for their own, the problem they created themselves. Uh, we don't think that's a, a very responsible position. 
Don't forget that Mr. Obaka has been saying since the Lord's election, he's saying all manners of things, accusing President Tinubu of all kinds of uh, allegations that are not true, not based on facts, that are just things that he dredges up and he stretches to, to, to mudsling the president. There's no, there's no basis for all these things that he has done. And, you know, even by his last statement, uh, written by his, uh, his uh, media advisor, who was even trying to, to find some holes in President Tinubu's credential as a Democrat. And we keep asking, who is a better Democrat? Is it Atiku Abubakar that joined Abasha uh, in the, under the, the, the party arrangement whereby all the five parties that Abasha founded were all uh, supporting Abasha? And Atiku at that time even contested with the governor of, uh, of Ademowa State. Is it, when you look at what Tinubu did, he campaigned for democracy uh, after the annulment of June 12 election. His house was, was bombed by the military, the uh, agents of the military. He had to go into exile for about five years, where he was able to gather resources, galvanize people to, to oppose uh, military rule. And today, we are enjoying the efforts that he and other people of like minds put into, into this fight for democracy. So there's no question as far as we're concerned, no doubt at all, that President Tinubu is a Democrat. He's not the person who will just want to impose a, 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 a one-party state on our country. I think he, he wants opposition. The APC wants opposition. The PDP and the other parties should come together to give APC a viral opposition and not just and stop blaming uh, President Tinubu or the judiciary for whatever problems they are facing now. But Mr. Anandoga, you will agree that the president actually enjoys a good relationship with governors, even from opposition parties. And you've had some of them declare either directly or indirectly their support for him and for his administration, although they are in opposition political parties. Perhaps that's the reason some people are worried that it does appear uh, it's looking like it's just the APC all the way. No, that's not true. That's a wrong uh, perception of what is going on. What the opposition governors have seen is that the president is playing the role of a father, father to all, irrespective of the party you belong to. You know, the last time it was Governor Diri that came to visit him in Abuja, and it just coincided with the time that the Supreme Court was giving judgment in the president's favor. But you see, either Governor Bala Mohammed or other members of, uh, I remember I was in the in a, in a Akwai Bomb last week, Governor Elo, also saying the same thing, that the president has shown that he's a father of all. It's not just the, an APC president now. He's the president of all governors, president of all people of Nigeria. So that's, that's the way he is. He's not, he has moved beyond party politics. He's now, he now sees himself as the father of all of the 200 million people that we have in this country. Uh, the candidates, presidential candidates now of the Labour Party in the last presidential elections, Peter Obi, you know, uh, recently mentioned that he is not desperate to be president. Uh, rather, he's desperate to have a good Nigeria, uh, a Nigeria that is working. How do you react to his declaration? Well, that, that, that's the vision of the president himself, of President Etunubu. He's planning to, to, I mean, to bequeath to Nigeria a country that is uh, very robust economically, a country that can meet the yearnings of his people, as well as the youthful population. We have about 60% of our people today uh, belong to the, the youth. And he's trying to do that to give them confidence, to make them patriotic, to love this country. And you can see the effort he's making uh, globally. He was in India, he was in Saudi Arabia, he was in Doha. He's been to a lot of countries trying to sell Nigeria to investors. The president has a, has a vision to declare to Nigeria by the time he finished his first time in 2007, 27, a, a, a country with a GDP of not less than $1 trillion. And he, he knows that this is a big ambition that is uh, achievable. And that's why he's, he's been on the road trying to, to, to get investors to come and invest in Nigeria, assuring them that the country is safe for their investment, assuring them that there will be no problem in repatriating their funds once they make profits and so on and so forth. And it's, of course, we everybody else has seen what he's doing. He's become the marketer in chief of, of this country, not just our commander in chief. 
the marketer in chief, and he's doing it so well everywhere he goes, trying to, to give confidence to investors to bring in their money. And Nigeria needs it. And that's, as I said, that's what he's, he's trying to do. Uh, what will be saying is not, is not his original idea. That is the mission and vision of our president. I would like to get your thoughts on another matter. Former President uh, Olusegun Obasanjo has made a call for developing a pro-Africa democracy. How do you react to that? Well, I think the suggestion is coming very late. Uh, I remember in 1979, Obasanjo, when he was uh, the military co commander, uh, set up the Constitution Drafting Committee and the Constitutional Assembly. The submission was that Nigeria should have a presidential democracy. This is what we have been doing. We did this in 1993, and we have, been, we have been on it since 1999, presidential democracy. Uh, Obasanjo had the time. At the time he was president of Nigeria, between 1999 and 2007, to ask the National Assembly to change our constitution. And there were the, the, uh, various efforts when he was there to amend the constitution. He cannot just now, after he had bled office, how many years, 16 years after, now suddenly getting wiser, oh, something is wrong with the presidential system of government, and, and so on and so forth, and then saying you have uh, what you call Afro, Afro democracy or something. Look, there's what you, today in the world, you don't, you don't try to reinvent the wheel. What's a system? We have a federal system of governance, and Nigeria has chosen a presidential system. Whatever problems we have. Uh, Bayon Anuga is special advisor to the president on information and strategy. He has been speaking to uh, developments in the political space, the allegation by the People's Democratic Party and its candidates in the presidential election at Tiko Bubaka that the APC is uh, working to turn Nigeria to a one-party state. Yes, Mr. Nanuga, you may kindly continue uh, land on your thoughts there. Come again, please. Yes, I was telling you to, to land on your thoughts, the statement you were making about uh, that call by uh, former President Obasanjo for a pro-democracy, uh, a pro-Africa democracy. Yeah, I was saying that it's, it's needless at this time. Nigeria is already practicing presidential democracy. If you want to change it, we need to amend the entire constitution. And that's not going to be an easy task. Uh, this country, as, as can our legislators can look at the constitution again and see where we can make amends. We are, the problem we have now today is that uh, the presidential system is very, very expensive. Expensive for the candidates who vie for, for election, expensive for the country to run. All these things can be amended. You can amend, you can look at what you are doing wrong, and so not, not, not entirely throwing it overboard. You can reform it. You can make it better for Nigeria. Mm. Uh, so uh, what really would you say the Bola Tinubu administration is doing to strengthen democracy and the rule of law? It's doing a lot. It's a lot. This is a president who has no interest in interfering in what he surely does. People forget that we have three arms of government. And they are independent of each other, of one another. The judiciary is independent. The president cannot be teleguiding what the judiciary is doing. He's not doing it. And what he is concerned with is how to make the judiciary as an institution to be very, very strong. And I was here last week, the attorney general and, uh, told the world that the president has, has uh, told the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission to look into the remuneration and allowances that the members of the judiciary uh, take every, on a monthly basis. Uh, I think the RMA, RMA, RMAFC came out with a competition of about 7 million Naira per year for the, for the, for the chief judges of Nigeria, for instance. The president feels that is not enough, uh, that the thing has to be reviewed for that. Because the president is concerned that if you want the judges to perform very well, we need to make them very comfortable. We need to provide for their basic needs. As of now in Nigeria, that is not the case. Our chief justice, if you look at the salary, even across the West African region, across when you compare us, for example, with South Africa, 
the total package of the Chief Judge of Nigeria is about less than $9,000 a year, with all the allowances put together. Whereas his counterpart in South Africa, his, his Chief Judge of South Africa, is earning close to once, about $160,000 something thousand dollars a year. The lowest court judge in South Africa is earning about $100,000 something thousand dollars a year. And when you put, just appoint that on what our own judges are, we just say, yeah, yeah. We cannot continue that along that line. And that's why the president is concerned that something must be done to lift our judges above where, where, we, are, where we put them now. Absolutely. They cannot, they, they, need, they need to have dignity. They need Absolutely, to have dignity Mr. Nanuga. Uh, th th that is critical and to sustain the independence of the judiciary as an arm of government. So, indeed, man, indeed, man indeed. I'm afraid that's the much we'll be able to take on the program today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, Special Advisor to the President on Information and Strategy, Bayonunuga. Thank you so much for talking to us.